So today's topic is super popular and I've gotten a bunch of requests on it. So let's talk about how to get published relatively quickly as a medical student. And if you're super ambitious, a lot of the things I'm going to tell you will help you get published even as a high school student, if you're into that, and even college student. So going straight into this, the first background that I want to tell you is that research is important across all domains, right? So if you're going to go into medicine, it's important in college. It's also important in medical school, and it'll probably be important even in residency. But unfortunately, you as students are almost always lowest on the totem pole, which means that you take whatever the low-hanging fruit is, right? Because only after you have stuff under your belt, once you have a few publications, will you have the luxury to eventually say, okay, you know, I don't know if I want to publish on that anymore because I've done enough of that. But if you don't have many publications, it's really important, and one of my mentors told me this, to take whatever it is that you can grab. The low-hanging fruit really for you as a med student is probably what's most important just to show that you can make contributions, right? And so with that, I'm actually going to pivot to what is one of the easiest most simple quote unquote way to get published, which is case studies. And I put this in quotations because I don't want to underrate case studies at all. Case studies are very important. They actually are uh, significant pieces of literature and people can learn a lot from them. I know some of the best things I've learned in medicine have come from ideas that I've gleaned from case studies and been like, oh, so that's how that disease works. So some of you may be wondering what are case studies? So case studies are basically when you write up an interesting patient presentation and what you learn from it. And the reason why this presentation is geared toward medical students is because case studies are usually related to patients. And therefore, as medical students, you are seeing a lot of patients and chances are you will have more than enough knowledge to write up case studies. And as I mentioned before, case studies are low hanging fruit. Uh, again, as I said, you see patients as a med student almost every day, right? And if you can understand what makes a patient unique, if a certain presentation is different, or what have you learned from this that you might want to share with the rest of the scientific community, case studies are almost no extra work. You don't have to do much more work because you're already seeing a bunch of patients. So if you see an interesting patient that you think, wow, this is an interesting case, I learned a lot from it and I want to share it with the community, this is a great way to do that. However, I do want to give you some red flags. You cannot publish case studies without knowing medicine, okay? And so you usually need to have at least 1 to 1.25 years of medical background to know the medical vernacular, medical terminology, nomenclature, how do you talk about things, what do lab values mean. You need at least one year of basic science medis medical school stuff under your belt before you can write case studies. I personally wrote my first case study about 1.25 years into medical school. Uh, and the lesson I learned was don't underrate yourself. So 1.25 years in, I wrote a case study and I actually got it accepted to the national conference. Only two people from every state get accepted and I was one of them and I was like blown away. So don't underrate yourself, but do know that there is a large barrier to entry, but don't let that discourage you from trying. All right, so with all of this being said, I do want to obviously give you enough background to tell you I have done multiple case studies at this point. And so the reason I didn't publish this earlier was I wanted to make sure I knew enough about it to share with you. I didn't want to make sure I was publishing this video and I hadn't published yet. So I have multiple case studies under my belt. I also have a bunch of posters that I've made about case studies. So today we're going to be focusing on how to make a poster like this one and how you can do it. Because this was the first poster I made about a case study and I did it about 1.25, 1.5 years into my training. And I'm going to talk about how I did it. The first thing that you're going to do to get to this point is you are going to need to email doctors you know to find cases, right? You as a medical student and even undergrad don't know what's interesting. You also don't know what, is this a normal presentation? Is this abnormal? Only doctors who have been in the field for years know, oh wow, this is important enough to write a case study about. So you need to email doctors and say, hey, I'm interested in your field. I want to talk about particular patients. And I know one of the easiest ways to do that is through a case study. Do you have any interesting case studies that might be useful for me to write up and submit to a journal or submit to a conference? Um, and then let's say doctors respond to you. Then you already have a patient and you're going to write it up. So I'm going to walk you through both of these. It's going to be a bit of a longer video, but trust me, you will appreciate it. So in terms of emailing doctors, the best way to do this is often if you already have a specialty in mind that you enjoy or if you have a conference in mind that you want to attend. Both of those are really good reasons to say, hey, you're a doctor in this field of interest. I love internal medicine. You're an internal medicine doctor. Can you please tell me if you have any cases about internal medicine? Because I want to write them up and submit them to this conference to make it um, to, to show people I'm interested in internal medicine. So you'll see that this is actually the email I sent one of my mentors and I said, hey, look, there's this conference coming up. 
I'm thinking I want to do internal medicine. Do you have any interesting cases? Because I'm a dumb medical student. I don't know what's interesting. And you clearly see way more patients than I do. And I got a response from multiple doctors. And what I did was once I had that patient, you're going to have to sit down with the mentor who sent you that patient and ask them, how do you approach this case study? Okay, because this is where you actually need an input. You need to ask your mentor, what about this case is different? What can I learn from it? Because usually you will not just publish a case study about a very common case. Like right lower quadrant appendicitis is so common that publishing a case study about it is useless. But let's say it was appendicitis that presented with left lower quadrant pain. Well, now suddenly it's interesting, right? So sometimes you may have a common disease that has a different outcome, or sometimes you have a zebra of a disease altogether. A zebra is a disease that doesn't really happen that often. It's a very rare disease. So based on that, you need to have your mentor's feedback because you need to know how you're going to frame the case before you start writing up the case. So in my case, you'll know that this case study that I wrote was about a hepatocellular carcinoma case. It's just basically cancer of the liver. But nothing's really that interesting about cancer of the liver. A lot of people get it. So what made this case interesting was that it was a case in a patient who had been exposed to the fumes of the World Trade Center's attacks. So when you look at it through that lens and say, holy cow, could the exposure to the fumes from the World Trade Centers have had an impact on this patient's development of hepatocellular carcinoma? Hmm. Interesting, maybe. And now suddenly you got yourself a case study because that's actually really novel. Like, oh shit, maybe it could have had an impact. And you want to write that up because maybe you want to share this with the community like, oh wow, these fumes can have increased risk for car cancers, right? So how do we get here? If you have now had the discussion with your mentor about what exactly it is about this poster that you want to set apart, then you're pretty much set for the rest. So I'm gonna talk you through how to write the introduction, the case description, and then ultimately the discussion. But remember, you have to have had the discussion with your mentor. So I wanna give you the example for me. In this case, hepatocellular carcinoma is a very common disease. A bunch of people get it. It's a cancer of the liver. So in this case study, what I did was I said, I know this is a common disease, but I want you to know that this happened in a patient that was exposed to the fumes of the World Trade Center attacks. And the whole point of this was to get people thinking about that event because the World Trade Center attacks happened about 20 years ago. And guess what? 20 years is a, enough of a latent period that those fumes and carcinogens that they were exposed to could now actually translate to an increased risk for cancer. And again, I want you to realize a case study is not intended to prove anything. A case study is a sample size of one. The only thing you want to accomplish with a case study is get people thinking about a disease in a different way, if it's a common disease, or to share a finding of a very unique disease. In my case, hepatocellular carcinoma, very common disease. So the point that I wanted to share with this was to say, hey, this is a very common disease, but it happened in this patient that was exposed to the World Trade Center attacks. And yes, he had a bunch of other risk factors, but I also want you to know, like, we should really consider like these World Trade Center attack fumes. Now is the time when they could actually cause an increased risk for cancer, and that could have been the case in our patient, right? And but just by saying that, you make what was originally a very common presentation suddenly very, very interesting because you're pulling in a new variable that other people may not have thought of. And that's the whole point of a case study, to get people thinking about a common disease in a different way. So now let me actually walk you through each of these sections and how you would make them on a poster. The introduction, case description, and discussion, which for literally any case presentation, if you're going to turn it into a poster, these three sections are imperative. You want to do them well, and if you do them well, you'll get accepted and you'll make a badass poster. So with that being said, let's go step by step. So the first one is the introduction. How do you make this? The introduction is always about a generic overview of the disease process. So in my case, it was hepatocellular carcinoma. What is hepatocellular carcinoma? Describe it. What causes it? In this case, one of the biggest risk factors for hepatocellular carcinoma is hepatitis C, which, funnily enough, won the Nobel Prize just yesterday. Discovery of hepatitis 3 by three scientists won the Nobel Prize. So one of those risk factors was hepatitis C. And then the second risk factor is actually exposure to carcinogens, right? So I mentioned those two risk factors because I knew they were going to come in handy in framing my case, which is why you need to know how you're going to write the case beforehand so that way you can frame the introduction. Otherwise, you can say so many things about hepatocellular carcinoma, right? You can say it's a cancer of the liver. It's caused by 80, 80 different things. But I focused in on two things, hepatitis C and, and carcinogens, because that was what was most relevant to my particular case, right? And so that's how you'd start the introduction. And you'll notice that I also included a nice little image to make it fun. Next up, case description. The way you write a case description for a case study is very simple. 
If you have ever been in the hospital and seen the way that residents present patients or even the way that you might present a patient when you're on the wards, you want to do the exact same thing. Start by talking about the patient's history, the HPI, but not everything. I don't want to I don't want to know about the social history of whatever it is if it's not relevant to the case. I want a very focused HPI. You know, what is the problem? What is the relevant past medical history? What is the relevant social history? So in this case, if this patient had hepatocellular carcinoma, it would be important to know if he had a drinking history, right? That would be relevant. And now next up, you want to describe the physical exam. One of the biggest mistakes I see in other people who write case studies is that they often just jump straight to labs or imaging because that's usually where the diagnosis is. You never want to do that because as I said, as physicians, some of the most important details are often uncovered in the history and the physical exam. So you start with the history, then talk about the physical exam, vital signs, right? And then after the physical exam, and again, in the physical exam, only include parts that are relevant. I don't want to hear about like, their normal abdominal bowel sounds if they didn't have anything abnormal going on. There's no reason to include that because you have limited space. So include only the pertinent positives or the pertinent negatives. So what I mean by that is, let's say this patient had hepatocellular carcinoma, but they didn't have scleral icterus, which is yellowing of the eyes, or if they didn't have jaundice, or if they did not have um, ascites. Those are all relative pertinent negatives because let's say he had cirrhosis secondary to hepatocellular carcinoma. Then I might expect those things. So you need to tell me, oh, he didn't have these things. And then, then I would be thinking, hmm, why didn't he have these things? That would be an interesting point that I would hope you explain later. But that those are all things you want to include, pertinent positives and pertinent negatives. After the physical exam, Focus on labs, only the relevant labs, right? So in this case, this patient is hepatocellular carcinoma, maybe cirrhotic, so include AST, ALT, maybe any abnormal electrolytes. I would also include um, any potential um, changes in their ALKFOS, right? These are all things that are found in labs that they should have gotten for this patient. Then, only then do you want to do imaging. So you want to go in this order. You want to go from the basic tools you have at the disposal, history, physical, labs, and then imaging, because oftentimes imaging is where the diagnosis will come in. And if you jump straight to imaging, you're ruining and kind of kind of like diminishing the value of medicine, right? Which is to follow a very standardized process. And imaging is only a very privileged tool that few people have. So you really want to guide us through history, physical, labs, then imaging. Once you have the imaging, then you can tell us how did the patient eventually get diagnosed or what was the crux. And so in this case, the patient um, was seen to have multiple masses in the liver consistent with hepatocellular carcinoma, which was seen on CT scan, something like that. And then you want to talk about the outcome. Okay, he had hepatocellular carcinoma. Um, were we able to cure it? Did we decide to do radiation? Did we decide to do comfort measures only? What, what happened? That is the entire case description from start to finish. But notice that I didn't include any interpretation of the data in that. I didn't say, oh, his ALKFOS was high, but we knew that that was the case because we assumed it was because of hepatocellular carcinoma. Or, oh, his potassium was a bit low, and that was because we assumed his kidneys were shot. Or something like that. That doesn't make any sense, right? So you don't want to include any interpretation. Save any form of interpretation for the discussion. The case presentation is usually an objective description of what the case was and the pertinent findings. And last but not least, now you have the discussion. This is the most important part of the poster because this is where you're going to tie everything together with the interpretation of your analysis, right? So what I said was, this patient had hepatocellular carcinoma. Great. He had hepatitis C, but, but guess what? His PCR, this admission was negative for hepatitis C. So he had hepatocellular carcinoma with a negative PCR, this admission. He had a bit of an alcohol history. But I do want to point out, he also had this other risk factor that he was exposed to the fumes of the World Trade Center attacks. And so the discussion is where you start interpreting all of the data and make the point that you want to make. What is the interpretation of the diagnosis? What do you want me to care about? Why is this case of hepatocellular carcinoma different from every other case of hepatocellular carcinoma? And what should I, as a clinician who is just going to watch you presenting this poster, what should I take away? Right. And so what I said in this discussion was the thing that you should take away as a clinician is just make sure to ask about oh, wow, you were around during the 9-11 attacks? Were you exposed to the fumes? If so, wow, then that might increase your risk for some cancers. I should look into that. You know, that might be something I want to look into because it's been 20 years. And that was the point I wanted to get across. And um, clearly, they must have found this, this case somewhat interesting because I got accepted. Uh, but hopefully, this gave you a full walkthrough for what to expect in terms of a fo uh, making a poster. And you can make something like this um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like, 
comment, share, subscribe. I will definitely make more videos like this, hopefully talking even about how to publish something like this because I have done that as well. So thank you for watching. Stay tuned for future videos. And as always, thanks for the support.